Hi, my name is Connie. Um, <clears throat> first few seconds, you'll probably notice I'm not a speaker, I'm definitely not a writer, but um, I felt like God was asking me to give my testimony. I was sexually abused when I was a child, when I was 10, and um, it wasn't until my senior year, the beginning of my senior year in high school, that Child Protective Services came in the house and removed my sister and I. Um, before it could even go to court, my abuser decided the day before he was supposed to take a lie detector test that he would take his life. So all of our, our family and our whole life kind of blew up at one time. And part of me was like, well, I was still broken, but I didn't feel the need that I had to talk because I was like, he's gone, why, you know, get over it kind of thing. And, and I really didn't want to talk. And um, so I'd gone to Virginia Tech and I remember meeting this really cute guy named Skeets and I just felt like we were starting to get serious about dating and, and I was so afraid that he was going to say, well, tell me about your family. I was like, ooh, no. And he would probably leave. Um, but God gave me his grace. And I sat there and I told him and opened up my heart. And he was like, wow, let's pray. And um, that just blew my heart because I never had someone that treated me like that, let alone wanted to pray and say, I care for you. Let's see what God says about this. So basically, he was like, can you go home and, and, and try to resolve things with your mom? I was like, no, you don't know how to stand. I, I can't do that. And he kept saying, but, but God can help you do that. And, and he was right, and God has helped me to do that. Um, it's been hard, it's been difficult, and at the same time, I, we got married a few years later, and, and I felt like I, I was still having these issues in my life, and I was like, why are these things popping up? And it's because what's inside is going to come out until you talk about it. And it's kind of like a time bomb. It's going to come out one way or the other. And was I going to let it happen willingly, or was I just going to let it happen, like when I'm trying to discipline my kids and it comes out in anger, or, or any other obstacle that was going to come, I had to face it. So I started praying and asking God, and um, I remember going to different Bible studies and, and talking, and little by little, you know, we all have codes as, as kids that have been abused. You have like these little code words, you say a little bit to give people a little bit of information to see how they're going to handle it before you're going to share anymore. So we had a whole lot of code, code language going on, and, and God started healing a lot through women's Bible studies. And, and little, just little by little, he was taking my heart and, and healing it. Well, then it became about nine years ago, we, um, Beth Moore again, like Michelle said, there was a book called Breaking Free. And man, he broke some chains and he was breaking me free. And I felt for the first time, like we had, um, with these ladies, we were able to share, just be transparent and real, my story. And, and it's like, wow, all the chains were falling down. I was like, wow, he's healing me, yay. And, and then God said, you know what? Let's go a little bit deeper. And I was like, oh, no, I don't know, I'm good. And he said, no, I, I, what I need you to do, or I want you to do, this is August. Well, actually, it was January, he told me, but I didn't listen until August. He said, I want you to write and come and meet with me. I'm like, well, no, I'm right. I'm not a writer. And he's like, I just want you to meet with me. I want you to meet from August now until Christmas and just write whatever I tell you. And I'll, I'll open the first page because, like I said, you'll, you'll realize I'm not a writer. But anyhow, Friday, August 29, 2008. Lord, I know that you've been preparing my heart for a long time to write my story, and I'm still not sure how it will come together. But I know you'll show me along the way. I believe you want me to write whatever you put on my heart each day of the memories of the past. I know I will write you each day until Christmas, and then you'll have my story. The story you created even before I was conceived. This will be my gift to you this Christmas, a book of my life, how you've always been there for me. How you've always guided me and drawn me closer to you. I know the grammar will be a mess and my sentences will have little structure. I know you will read through the lines and you'll see my heart, just like you always have and always will. I know some days will be hard as I look back and see what you brought me through. I know it won't be easy and I might open some wounds, but I know you will help me. I can't do this on my own. I know that this morning when I tried to sit and mentally go through the highlights of my life with you, whew, it was exciting, sad, happy, and even, even fearful at times. I was amazed at how memory can take you back so quick to a place I tried so hard to run away from. How memory can make you cry tears one minute of hurt 
and then turn the tears of deep gratitude and a desire to be before you in your presence. Lord, please help me to share all that you would have me share. You are my life. I'm nothing without you. It's only by your grace that I'm even here. I know your plans for, for me have always been for good. I know this because your word tells me and I believe you. But sometimes, Lord, I have struggled at times to see good. When at times I have felt pain and betrayal in my life, you have always been faithful to me. Thank you for loving me and being there when I so desperately needed you. For all the times you pursued me when all I wanted to do was run the other way. I guess I better go to sleep. Lord, thank you for today. I love you, Connie. So for the next four months, he had me sit down. And every day I didn't know what I was going to write. And it was scary. And he, he told me, just write what I tell you. Just write whatever memory comes in your head. And I'm going to heal you. And by Christmas, you're going to be healed. And I claimed that verse. I just kept thinking, OK. And it was hard. There were nights I stayed up into the morning because I knew I had to write him. There were days that, that were crazy. Um, October 4th. The whole thing I'm trying to share with you is that, like you mentioned earlier, you got to say it, you got to share it, you got to go through it, and it's going to be hard. And writing this was released for me. It was um, October 4th, and I had this fancy journal you all see I wrote on. I think I mostly put it in this so I could tear out a page if later I didn't want anyone to read it. But I didn't, I haven't. I actually wrote it four, uh, nine years ago. This, this past week was the first time I picked it up and read it again. So part of me is like, ooh, it's kind of crazy what I decided to do that. I don't know. But anyhow, this is what I wrote on one day to encourage you. <laughs> well, last night was hard. To go back and relive, relive all that happened is enough in itself. But to look at all the different aspects of what I lived through, not only the physical and emotional, but now even spiritual. Evaluating and confessing my heart on paper is the hardest thing I know the Lord has asked or even called me to do. Lord, I want to be obedient. But having to constantly face my past is taking its toil. So many times before I have dealt with my past with you. But it was in small quantities and for short periods of time. And now it's been every day for a month. I think about it all the time and I constantly have images running through my mind. I try to sort out the images and keep them in order. But when I try to organize my story, it causes me to linger in places that I, I honestly I'd rather stop visiting. But God, I know you have a purpose. And I've walked with you long enough to know you love me and you are faithful. You know I'd struggle with all this. You knew it would be hard. God help me, I can't do this without you. Draw me close to you and help me to empty myself and do the work you have called me to. Pour yourself into me. I need your strength and your power. I am weak. I can't go until, wait. Lord, thank you. Even as I pour out my heart on paper, there it is. I am weak. When I am weak, you are strong. Okay, Lord, I have to go now and find that verse. And here it is, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What a verse. God, thank you for giving me encouragement. I needed you to help me, and you have. I know I'm weak, and I pray for your power. I read the rest of the verse, and I, and I can't even attempt to delight in weaknesses or, or delight in insults or hardships or, or persecutions or difficulties. It's hard for me to imagine me delighting me when I get caught up in the whining. Forgive me, Lord. I do delight in you, and your grace is sufficient for me. You have renewed my strength. Thank you for meeting with me and being so real and so close to me. I love you, Connie Sue. And the cool thing is, is that was like in the middle. I kind of wanted to see where, where in the world did, did it ever get easy? Was it always hard? Because obviously I haven't read it since then. And, and he showed me, that, yeah, it's going to get hard. When you start trying to deal with pain in your past, it is going to be hard. But by the time I read it, and I, finished, I actually finished um, Christmas Eve, which was kind of cool, because I felt like, wow, that was, I felt like God just took this huge burden and it just rolled off my back. I mean, I struggled and tried to get healing little by little. And this was like, woo, she was like, we are getting rid of we can get rid of this. And, um, and he did. And, and that's my encouragement. I know it's supposed to be short, and I'm not real short. I'm supposed this way. But um, <laughs> this is the verse I want to leave you. Have I not commanded you? Commanded. It wasn't a suggestion. He, he commanded us. Be strong and courageous. 
don't be afraid and don't be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I think that's the biggest gift he gave me was he made me look back to, to show me he was always there in every day and every circumstance. And I encourage you to write your story. Make time to meet with him. He'll show up.